Round it, we say ten damn warrior blessings, kings and queens. You don't know, yeah. Um, it is. Well, we're in the day of the fifth day of Kwanzaa, and then in the morning of the sixth. It was our Kibble and Kwanzaa today, so really wasn't able to do the chakra reflection for the uh, fifth day. So we're gonna do it now. You know, until I and I go to sleep, you know, it's still the day of Nia. Yeah. Um, as said, kings and queens. For those who may not be aware, um, this we're celebrating Kwanzaa at the moment, seven day celebration, and uh, for each day I've been doing a chakra reflection on the principle of the day. Uh, um, Kwanzaa is based around seven principles called the Unguzo Saba, Unguzo Saba in Swahili means seven principles, Saba meaning seven, Unguzo is principles and so uh, for each day of Kwanzaa there is a principle to focus on and so I've been doing a reflection, taking the time out to do a reflection but we had a beautiful celebration, our Kebel and Kwanzaa which I was uh, involved in organizing and hosting kings and queens so I wasn't able to do my reflection today so I'm taking the time in the night when I just got home to do that and so I want to start by saying give thanks to all those who came out to the fantastical occasion that was uh, our Kebel and Kwanzaa we appreciate you know your presence your blessings and all the people that came out and presented when we got Mikhail Amin, when we got Asabi, Hawa, Tashai, Makida, uh, Ark Anum um, and many others, kings and queens, you know, um, who came down, presented, um, in particular, the children of the Al-Kebel Academy of Excellence and the uh, the Soul Force Panthers, the children of al Kebel and Revivalist Movement. We appreciate you all and all the audience members, all the store holders, um, you know, the, 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 the independent black businesses that were on show in full effect today, kings and queens. We appreciate you. So give thanks, you know what I mean, for... For coming down so yeah today uh was the principle of nia nia meaning purpose purpose mm, purpose and uh the definition is to make our collective vocation the building of our community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness to make our collective vocation the building of our community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness beautiful 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 definition kings and queens what i'm going to highlight first and foremost and i'm going to talk a little bit about black love in the spirit of nia but what i'm going to highlight first and foremost is this thing about restoring your people to their traditional greatness um and i like that part of the definition because it presupposes the fact that we had an origin that was great yeah um and so in order to restore ourselves to our traditional greatness we really have to discover what that traditional greatness is and many of us um on this journey that we call consciousness that's part of what we get into first and foremost which is like just learning about where we come from yeah um and the fact that we have a history that begins before slavery um and the idea that uh, Mama Marimba Annie says that if you want to get well, you have to have a vision of wellness, that like you have to know what it feels like to be well. And so we kind of learn what it feels like to be well by learning from our history, our culture, um, the lessons, um, the teachings of our ancestors as a way of life. Yeah. Um, and that is really like when we check it, Baba Senghor Jawara Baya, former president general of the UNIA, says that we've been free on the planet longer than we've been in, 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 than, longer than we've been oppressed. So there's always something to go back to. It's just about being able to look back, um, to go forward, do that Sankofa journey uh, to understand that greatness. And to, un in understanding that greatness, you have a, a guideline to what we are still yet to achieve from the position that we're in at the moment, you know. And that's the real value of history, you know. Like, um, I, I'm, I, 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 I'm glad that I was taught the value of history in a way that it's supposed to be a signpost, a lesson, yeah, um, that judges where you're at and where you still need to go. It's not just some dead dates, yeah, locked down somewhere. So I love this definition to, to, to make our collective vocation, collective, it's a communal thing, the building, um, sorry, the, the building of our community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness. And that means that in every field, in any field of endeavor that we encounter, um, we must be about restoring our people 
to their traditional greatness kings and queens you know um and whatever our particular uh expertise is we use that uh, expertise to be able to restore our people to our traditional greatness um i'm going to focus a little bit on black love for this um reflection because it has really been an honest reflection of mine um and i'm not going to really go into the the specific piece of news and any breakdown on, on the specific piece of news that we encountered recently um with regards to you know one of our greats yeah and she's one of our greats you know what i'm saying um namely serena williams but this this um news of her impending marriage or her engagement has brought about many conversations that has caused me to reflect on this issue of black love as it relates to myself so um and i'm gonna do it in this reflection because it's pertinent to the, the principle of the day which is near purpose um and if for, for me personally and let me just declare put my cards on the table first and foremost um i am a nationalist pan-africanist yeah which means that i have a a, a a perspective on the building and developing of uh africa and african people yeah and central to that is the, the our ability and our capacity to develop families all right and meaningful relationships with each other yeah so as a nationalist as a garvey um uh i there is a a part of my purpose yeah and fundamental to achieving my purpose is the idea that at some point uh in life yeah i create a union with an african woman of like mind and we build together yeah there is no other option yeah i'm not seeking any other exploration out there you know and these none of that ain't going on and the reason for that is kings and queens not just because i love the black woman and i do i genuinely love the black woman i i love the black woman in form and in substance i love the black woman in physicality in mentality and in spirituality i have an abundant love for the black woman but beyond having the love for the black woman uh there is also in terms of nia building um our community in order to restore our people to our traditional greatness i have certain goals yeah that if i'm serious about fulfilling those goals they can only be achieved in the context of having a union with an african woman yeah and i'm making this a part of this reflection because that makes me a black love advocate yeah in the, in the sense of the fact that i promote um and seek to develop the concept yeah and the principle of black love in the black community of african love in the african community that the black man and the black woman must be able to come together and form meaningful relationships and in operating in the context of oppression anything other than that is symptomatic of that oppression or helps to perpetuate that oppression for me personally all right so therefore kings and queens that's the kind of principle that i live my life on that i project to the, my people all right personally there is no amount of standard low standards as it relates to black womanhood that would cause me to seek love relationship and family building outside of anything other than a black woman let me repeat that what i'm saying there right what i'm saying is the the present quality of the collective black womanhood is not a factor in whether or not i choose to develop my intimate relationships with a black woman nobody can come and tell me that their the quality and standard of black womanhood is currently low therefore you must explore other options there are no other options for me to explore let's say that was the case if they the, if there was a general low standard of black women yeah in my surroundings which there isn't yeah um there may be varying levels of compatibility but not necessarily generic low standards yeah but let's say it was the case yeah then i would get whatever standard i could most find myself most compatible with and work on that 
yeah so that we can um you know develop something different for the next generation that's the principle on which i stand on all right there is nothing about any other woman that could take me away from the black woman all right that's my principle that i live my life by so in saying that now kings and queens when i'm finding more and more that ones and ones have to be apologizing for promoting the concept of black love for wanting to see as a vocation in terms of us being able to develop ourselves yeah from beautiful unions with each other in order to restore our people to our traditional greatness people have to now be apologizing for thinking you know what i want to see black men with black women and black women with black men why why do we have to apologize for this i personally don't yeah and i think that we create a lot of excuses for why so many of us in the western hemisphere yeah like in um the uk for example we, we, we're said to have high numbers of interracial relationships quote unquote yeah where black men and women are dating outside of are, are dating or in relationship for, with people other than black men and women the stats here yeah, for both black men and women are pretty high yeah um, i can't remember what they are off the top of my head right now but from what i recall there wasn't much between it the last time they checked this thing out um and for me when it comes there are reasons for all of these things there are reasons if you look at all the individual reasons there are reasons why um we find that we don't seem to find each other in loving relationships yeah uh, many say for example that um, the higher you go up the corporate ladder there's less of us there so there's less opportunities to find black men and women uh, in meaningful relationships yeah um that may well that may well be true except for the fact that depending on who you speak to brother or sister we tend to apply different standards to each other in terms of how well we apply this rule in, in the sense of well if it's the fact that for a, a black man going up the corporate ladder means there's less black women then it would also mean that for the black woman so there's you know the, but when like the, some brothers don't apply that reason to the sisters them and some sisters don't apply that reason to the brothers them but there are other reasons there are in there are personal reasons upbringing and whatever else like that that where, where, whereby we can't seem to find each other in loving relationships as black men and women but to me the fundamental reason is that we don't have an ethos that says we want to find a black man or a black woman and nothing else will do if we had that undying commitment as african people to find each other and create loving relationships with each other whatever challenges exist in that context we would overcome them because we have that principle and that intention there are whatever other reasons you're going to give me as far as i am concerned the front the, the at the back basis of all of it is the fact that we do not have a commitment to each other as black men and women i don't care what other excuses what other reasons even genuine reasons the fundamental baseline thing is that we do not have an undying commitment to each other as black men and women because if we did i repeat whatever the challenges were we would overcome them in order to, in order to be with each other so i don't buy the argument um necessarily uh that just lack of opportunity yeah uh, is why we do these things or feeling rejected by the opposite is why we i don't i'm not into that yeah and i'm not even trying to say that that's not even relevant in certain circumstances certain individual circumstances what i am saying is that as a collective if we had a commitment to be with each other we would overcome those challenges in order to be with each other and so on this the well we're observing the fifth principle of kwanzaa Nia purpose i'm affirming again yeah that commitment because i believe that as a black man one of the best ways that i can help to build and restore my people to our traditional greatness is to form a loving union 
with a black woman. But beyond that, even more than that, develop loving relationships between black men and women. Help to create an environment where that, where that, where that can take place. Not just on an intimate level. Yeah, but on a, on, on a basic friendship level as well. Because I believe that the better that I can relate to black women in general, my mothers, my grandmothers, my aunties, my sisters, is the better way, is the better that I'll be able to relate to the woman that I eventually form that lasting union with. Yeah, there needs to be created an environment whereby we're committed to solving this, the, the problems that exist between us. We cannot restore, build our community as black people if black men and women are warring. We cannot restore our people to our traditional greatness if African men and women are warring, yeah? And finding all kinds of excuses and reasons, yeah, to be in conflict with each other, yeah? Petty conflict does not a community build. I have to get Shakespearean with the thing. <laughs> yeah, that's that. All right. So uh, yeah, it's just it's this it's just interesting that how how things develop in the in the sense of the fact that these this particular reflection came uh, was you know was, was carried on from yesterday but brought into the day of Nia purpose yeah um and I and I find that one of the biggest barriers for uh, for for us being able to really develop and build is the fact that we're constantly in conflict with each other and so I urge sisters and brothers you know to really look at that. And in terms of not just how we can fight our own gender corner, but also to reach out and understand where each other is coming from so that we can solve some of these problems. Because I believe that there is definitely uh, a war being manipulated among us right about now. I don't think it's all organic and comes from within, if that makes sense. I, don't, I really don't believe that. But wherever, wherever it's coming from, we have a responsibility to solve it. And so in me, so one of my ways of solving it is the fact that I have within myself resolved that I have an undying commitment to the African woman, yeah? Um, an unequivocal commitment to the African woman and to see the development, the mutual development of the African woman in alignment with myself and the, the development of myself in alignment with the development of the African woman. There is no other option for man. And I do believe that the more of us have that undying commitment to each other, even outside of the context of relationships, the better we will be able to build our community, the better we'll be able to form these loving relationships that we're talking about. Kings and Queens, I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm going to come back with the um, reflection for tomorrow, yeah, which is the day of Koumba creativity. That's going to be interesting. You know what I'm saying? So do stay tuned for that. Um, a little bit earlier in the day, but I had to, you know, don't want to miss a day, kings and queens. So we had to do the uh, chakra reflection for the, the, the fifth day of Kwanzaa. Nia purpose right now. Once again, shouting out everyone that came down to Al Kebul and Kwanzaa. I give thanks for your presence, your love, your energy, and your vibrations. Join us next year, you know what I'm saying, for Al Kebul and Kwanzaa. It's an annual event, kings and queens. So we give thanks for that. African power for all African people. Uhuru means freedom hotep means peace be unto you kings and queens round here we say ten damn blessings